Did you know that you can navigate through the Samsung Watch Ultra just by using certain gestures? This is not an app. This is actually built into the watch. You can do so much with this watch. You can even use a mouse that uses the gyro uh, sensors in the watch. But more on this in the later part of the video. The Samsung Watch Ultra, this watch right here, has been out for about a month now. And there are people that are still trying to decide if they should upgrade either from the 5 or from the 6. Uh, today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to give you an overview of the watch, do a, comp a small comparison between the Ultra and the 5, and also just do a little bit of a comparison between Samsung latest watch and some of its oldest ones, see how far it's come. Have they really made that much of a progress? And is it worth it to upgrade to this Ultra? And as well as uh, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of uh, tips and tricks that I learned using this watch for the, uh, since I got it. So for the heart rate tracking, I have the Ultra on my left side and the Watch 5 on my right side. And then on my chest, uh, which is synced to the phone, I have the Polar chest strap, which is kind of like the gold standard for heart rate tracking. And as you guys can see, the heart rate tracking is pretty on point. Despite the Ultra having the newer sensors, it pretty much was on par with the Watch 5 that, held, that had the older sensors. So I'm pretty uh, happy with the heart rate tracking. Now, when you look at the graph here, uh, during the indoor cycling, you can see that my max heart rate on the Watch 5, I mean on the Ultra, is 121 beats per minute, whereas on the Polar Chest strap, it's 120 beats per minute. Average heart rate for the Watch Ultra is 101, whereas on the Polar is 99. It's pretty accurate. You can see that I spent most of my time uh, in zone one on the Polar, same goes with the Ultra, uh, staying in zone one with a little bit of spikes in the zone two. So yes, as far as heart rate tracking, when it comes to indoor cycling, walking, and running, I find the Watch Ultra to be pretty accurate. And if you have the Watch 5 or the Watch 6, I find those to be pretty accurate as well, especially when it comes to movement that doesn't require uh, a lot of flexion in your wrist. Now, when it comes to movement that requires a lot of flexion in your wrist, I did the weight training exercise to kind of track it and show you guys what I got. Now, when it comes to weightlifting or any movement that requires a lot of wrist flexion, that's where smartwatches begin to uh, trail behind. Well, they fall significantly behind a uh, chest strap. For example, here you can see me doing weightlifting on the exact same workout. My marks, my max heart rate on the Ultra is 157 beats per minute, whereas on the Polar, the max heart rate is 132 beats per minute. Average heart rate on the Ultra is 131, whereas on the Polar, it's 112. That's a significant difference. So if you're trying to stay in the fat burning zone, you'll be totally off if you're using any smartwatch. Whereas if you're using a chest strap, you're gonna be more likely to, to stay within that range. Apple Watch, smart, uh, I mean Samsung Watch, Polar, none of those watches are gonna be accurate when you're doing uh, weightlifting or any exercise that requires a lot of wrist flexion. That's because all these watches use sensors that are on the wrist and the wrist moves a lot. There's a lot of flexion. So the accuracy is not going to be good. If you need to accurately track your heart rate while doing a lifting exercise, the chest strap is going to be the absolute best way to go. The next best thing that you can do is use a forearm heart rate tracker like the one that I'm showing you guys in the video. I don't know if they still sell this, but there are many more that you can buy that are like this. This one's a bit, uh, actually much more accurate than smartwatches are. Since this watch came out, there's been a lot of people that say that Samsung copied Apple. They took a lot of uh, inspiration from Apple and this and that. But the truth is, this watch looks nothing like the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, the thing is, there are some aspects that Samsung did take inspiration from, and it would have to be the, the band and the gesture. 
besides those two i don't see anything else oh and maybe the action button besides those three things i don't see anything else that samsung copied from apple these watches look nothing alike as a matter of fact this looks like the gear sport s i mean like the samsung gear sport from years ago um, samsung has been in the smartwatch game longer than apple has if you are a real fan of smartwatches or if you have been following smartwatches for a long time samsung has been doing things that apple eventually copied other companies copied and that's just how technology works you know there's going to be one company that does something another company is going to copy it and then there's going to be another company that does something and then another company is going to copy it look the the point is that all these companies take inspiration from each other and try to they try to make their product better what you guys don't realize is these companies they work with each other for the longest samsung is making has been making display panels for apple samsung has business partnership with apple apple has business partnership with google samsung has business partnership with google all these companies at the top they work with each other but it's us the average consumers is arguing who's better and who's it's it's just really all nonsense i mean it's fun i like to do it. i'm tim samsung all the way i have a samsung phone i have a samsung watch i convinced my girl to switch over to samsung so i'm a big fan of samsung but samsung wasn't always my first choice i actually used to use apple um, i used well before i went to iphone i was using htc uh, I was using, and then I was using Xperia. I was using all kinds of phones, and then I went to iPhone. But I was in the military, and I had a really hard time sharing files with non-Apple users, or even downloading files for offline use when you're on deployment. And with all that frustration, I ended up switching to Android. And I've been with Android since ever since. I've tried the newest iPhone. I don't have the newest iPhone, but I do have an iPhone right now, and I have a apple watch but samsung is my main thing it's you know all the other stuff i just for testing you know just to see what they're about but anyways let's get into the details of this watch right here this thing is absolutely gorgeous it is beautiful it is the most beautiful smartwatch i've ever owned up until now my favorite smartwatch of all time is the asus zen watch 3 that watch is an absolute timepiece it's it's beautiful it's magnificent it has gestures see now you got apple and samsung that have the pinch gestures meanwhile you have a asus zen watch a watch that came out back in 2016 or 17. it had gestures you can use you can do things like this to scroll up that way you don't have to touch the screen and i really miss you know having a watch like that i really don't understand how all these watches nowadays don't have those gestures that the asus watches like asus zen watch did but anyways all right so over here we have a few of the samsung's previous watches this is a watch that i've had for a long time i accidentally reset it and now i can't get it to connect or work anymore so unfortunately i'm unable to go through this watch and show you guys how it works but this watch was a revolutionary because he had i wasn't really saying the revolutionary because it wasn't the first but this was a watch from a major company that had a camera and an ir which means the ir can actually control your tv but this is one of samsung's oldest uh watches it has a heart rate scanner and that came out in 20 this one came out in 2015 now this is one of my absolute favorites uh it has the rotating bezel this is the one with tizen when samsung used to run tizen a lot of people don't like tizen they said it was slow and sluggish but for some reason tizen had always worked great for me so to get to the App, app drawer it's this right here and you can scroll through to look at all the apps and i really really love how samsung used to have this i actually prefer this than what they currently have right now 
as you can see you have all your apps um, you have the galaxy store and you can scroll through just like that or you can even just use your hands to swipe just like that but having this rotating bezel was really really cool this was definitely revolutionary as you can see it's got all the settings you know you have your bluetooth uh it has a speaker by the way samsung has speakers on your watches before apple but you wouldn't say apple copied samsung by now having speakers anyways i really love the rotating bezel on this uh watch right here it's a classic i really really love it at the time it came out i would only wear this uh to work out or go places but i would not wear this to sleep because it was just too bulky and it felt it felt really heavy now the watch ultra is a bit bulky as well but it just doesn't feel quite like this one so before this i had a watch active which was the uh, galaxy watch 4 and it was the first time that i had switched to this type of watches from the classic kind i went with this style because uh, it was easier to work out with and it felt easier to sleep with this is the watch 5 by the way i don't have the watch 4 because i traded the watch 4 to get this one so this is the correction yeah so this is the watch 5 right here now as you can see you have your this is when google this is when samsung switched to the Google Wear to Android Wear. So now you have your menu like this, opposed to before on the same in Tizen when you had this. Like I said, I personally prefer this over this. The only benefit to Android Wear that I see is that you can download more apps. Other than that, I really don't like this look right here. I prefer this. This was just classic. That's why I kept this watch. That's why I never traded in. It still works. As you can see, I have all my, you know, health data and everything is still in here. It still works. So I can wear this as much as I want to, you know, and it still connects to my phone. So that's the watch five. Now with the watch six, there really isn't. Now this is a smaller version of the watch six because this is my girl's watch honestly there really isn't much of a difference there's actually very very little difference between the watch 5 and the watch 6. i did a test of the heart rate and heart rate scanner and the heart rate scanner for the watch 5 watch 6 and the ultra are very on par they don't seem so even though samsung has all these new sensors now I really don't understand. I'm really not too sure what the benefits of all these new sensors are. When the heart rate sensor for the watch five was keeping up with the watch six, I mean with the watch seven, well, with the ultra, the heart rate was pretty much on par. I will show you guys a screen overlay of me working out and showing you guys. Now, as far as the watch five compared to the watch six, all I can say is that the only difference that I can see is the, the speed. So this has a little bit of a lag to it. Whereas this one is just much, it's just, I won't say much faster, but it is a bit faster than this. But other than that, watch six, watch six and watch five are very, very similar. Uh, the thing is with the newest update, there is a gesture control on this one now. So this watch six now has a gesture. When I say gesture, it means that you can, um, you know, do the double tapping or whatever, like this one has. So now this one has a gesture. I don't know if this one has a gesture in this in the update, but as far as the back, they look virtually identical. They both have the temperature sensors. The heart rate scanners look the same. And now the ultra. Now this right here is where things begin to look very different for the first time samsung has now added this action button this is where samsung copied apple so you can see that samsung previous watches only had two buttons two here it had a two button but it also has a rotating bezel 
this one only has one button but the screen is touch screen as well so anyways now uh, unfortunately with this one you don't have the rotating bezel like you do man having the rotating bezel is just so satisfying you have a digital rotating bezel but it's just not the same like anything touchscreen is just not quite the same as having you know a rotating and physical rotating bezel so taking it to the back like i said the heart rate sensors look virtually different now but they still track the same in my testing the heart rate sensors still work the same they both have the temperature sensor right here all of them have the temperature well all three of this have the temperature sensors now the quick release is pretty dope i see a lot of youtubers doing it wrong you're supposed to press it and then pull and to put it back you press it and put it in you don't force it in that's how you're supposed to put it back in there with this watch six you also have this quick release you press it down and you can remove the straps you press it down again this is a bit more difficult but you press it down again and you are good to go whereas with the watch 5 you have to slide this quick release right here the benefit to this is it allows you to put in different straps quite easy but this one is proprietary now the thing is even though it is proprietary you can easily get different watch straps for this watch right here and i'm going to show you guys one of the straps that i bought for this this is a watch strap that i got from amazon for the watch 6 i mean for the watch ultra i'm not really sure which one is top or bottom but i'm just going to put it in there as you can see it's pretty pretty easy to put it on you just simply press it and you are good to go now this part right here is magnetic as you can see this watch strap is pretty dope this part right here is magnetic. The only thing I don't like about this particular one is that this gap is a bit big on this side. But other than that, you know, it's a pretty dope watch strap. So one of the things that I noticed is the Google Assistant has been killing the battery on this watch right here. And I don't know why, but Google Assistant does and Bixby doesn't actually use much battery. Now, this is not well known but bixby actually works very well on this watch right here i use bixby for a lot of this stuff now instead of using my voice to wake up the google assistant i just use the gesture and that opens up the google assistant by doing it this way i can save a whole lot of battery instead of having the hey you know that activated via voice i can also customize this button right here to wake up Google Assistant. I find that to actually save a whole lot of battery. Now, everyone knows, well, most of you know about the gestures, right? There's another type of gestures that most of you might not know about, and I'm going to show it to you guys. To activate that gesture, what you want to do is you want to go into your search and type in universal, universal gestures. Once you type in universal gestures, you're going to click on it and you're going to see universal gestures you're going to turn it on and it's going to tell you that once you turn on universal gestures it's going to turn off your double pinch shake to dismiss you know on the other type of gestures you're going to turn this off and you're going to turn on activate universal gestures now when you activate universal gestures you can set how you want it to wake up and i'm going to show you guys exactly what i mean so for me personally, I have this to wake up the universal gestures. There is a ring that just came on. 
I'm going to change the ring color that way you guys can see it better so right here you can choose the indicator color I'm going to change it to green so that you guys can see when it comes on you see that green that now that's the gestures now look at this now I just open quick uh, you know like a menu if I want to bring up notifications I can just double pinch if I want to swipe the tiles I can just do that and now that will swipe the tiles now if I want to uh, resume playback I can do that or I can just go to the next one and I can hit play I can switch to you know different stuff I can basically use this to navigate the entire watch uh, no go back if I want to go back I just and that takes me back one more time that takes me back this is usually beneficial for if you are playing music or something and you want to click on play or you want to click on next the regular gesture will only allow you the regular gesture would only allow you to click on play or things like camera you take a picture whereas with a universal gesture you can pretty much control the entire screen so once again let me do this so I'm gonna toggle to different uh, parts of my screen this is the energy score I can double tap if I want to select that and that pretty much goes through the energy scores and if I want to go back I just shake it and now I'm back to my home screen I can also do bring up the menu go to apps as you can see now I'm in apps right I can scroll through whatever app I want to select if I want to select uh, maybe I want to select uh, smart light I mean smart things I just double to uh, double pinch and now I've just selected smart things if I want to go back I can just shake it and go back if I want to go back to a previous apps I just double uh, make a face twice you know it's it doesn't always work exactly how you want to but it just takes some getting used to if I want to scroll down there's a tutorial on how to do this exactly you can scroll down some more you can edit the watch faces which is crazy now this is a cursor which you can use to select items on the screen so let me show you guys how it looks as you can see I can move it around and the mouse goes wherever so if I want to select the heart rate now that's a selected heart rate if I want to measure my heart rate I just scroll down and now it's measuring my heart rate it's saying uh, 72 now if I want to go back I just now I'm back it has a tutorial on how to do this you're gonna have to go into the tutorial uh, you can start the tutorial over here in your phone or you can do it on your watch and learn how to use the universal gestures it is quite handy I find myself using it a lot when I'm cutting the grass and I have gloves on I can control the entire watch using universal gesture basically there's so much you can do with universal gesture you're gonna have to go into the app and go through the tutorial but anyways there is so much more you can do on this watch than you could have with this one right here and these are the things that a lot of people aren't talking about or because they simply don't know about my favorite part of the watches is, is just being able to do so much uh, being able to change some other, so much of its settings from the watch itself